Hey CoGrid fam, great to have you back. Buckle up, because today we're about to do some digital carpentry. We're diving into creating this Mac OS dock using vanilla JavaScript. I'll be your guide, taking you through each step with ease. Your small gesture of hitting that like button would mean the world. You can consider subscribing too. For those craving even more, explore the pro membership for access to source codes of each tutorial. All right, no more waiting. Let's get started. We'll employ ion icons, accessible via the CDN that's already integrated in the head. Additionally, the script file has been linked at the page's bottom. First step is introducing a container. Inside the container, we'll nest a div with the class doc. This will accommodate all our doc items. Within each doc item, we'll insert an ion icon with the fitting icon name. Let's start with mail open shark. To populate the rest, we'll replicate this doc item seven more times, each time customizing the ion icon to the desired icon. Let me take care of that swiftly. That concludes the initial setup. As expected, their appearance is quite plain on the page. To transform this into our dynamic dock, we'll dive into the world of CSS. To simplify access, I've already established predefined colors. Let's kick things off by targeting all elements on the page, setting their margins and paddings to zero. Additionally, we're taking care of the box sizing, setting it border box. Moving on to the HTML and body elements, we're making them span the entire viewport width and height. That's 100% of the view. To maintain a tidy presentation, we're hiding any overflow. And to set the stage, we're applying a background color. For the container, we're starting with its width, set to max content. Next up, we're positioning it absolutely. By utilizing top 50% and left 50%, we're placing it precisely in the middle of the viewport. To finesse this alignment, we're adding a transformation with using translate function. We're setting the bottom margin to 2M for that bit of breathing room. Additionally, let's also give it some padding, creating a nicely framed space. The container's display is set to flex so that we can center it horizontally and vertically using flex properties. We will also give it a background color and a thin solid border of one pixel. Let's also set border radius 40 pixels for rounded corners. We're also setting the transformation point at the center. For the dock, by setting display flex, we're orchestrating a neat row of dock items lined up side by side. Let's also set justify content to space around to create a balanced spacing scenario. Now, let's dive into the specifics of each dock item. We're starting with its width and height of 60 pixels to create a balanced square shape. The gentle border radius 30 pixels adds a smooth, rounded touch. Then we apply a margin of 10 pixels on the horizontal axis. Let's also give a background color and set a color for ion icons. The border adds a subtle, one pixel solid outline. To center the ion icon, we will again use display flex centering them both horizontally and vertically with justify content and align items. To bring elegance to the interactions, we've set a smooth transition over 700 milliseconds with a cubic bezier easing function. With transform origin set to bottom, the transformation point pivots from the bottom. Now, we're ready for the last step, adding JavaScript to make everything come alive. Let's start by grabbing the dock container using query selector. This lets us select the entire dock. Next, within this dock container, we'll get all the dock items. We do this by calling query selector all. With our references set, let's define a few constants that'll help us with our animations. We set the default item scale to one, hover item scale to 2.5 and neighbor item scale to two. We set a default margin for normal spacing and an expanded margin for when the icons grow, ensuring they don't overlap. Now, let's dive into the heart of our animation logic the update dock items function. This function is tasked with adjusting the size and margin of our dock items based on whether they are hovered over or are neighbors to the hovered item. We'll start by looping through each dock item. For each item, we'll initially set its scale and margin to the default values, which means no zoom and standard spacing. Then, we'll check if the current item is the one being hovered over by looking at the is hovered property. If it's true, we'll update the scale and margin values to make the icon larger and more spaced out. Now, if the item isn't the one hovered over but is adjacent to it, it's a neighbor. We can determine this by looking at the isNeighbor property. 
For neighbors, we want them to be slightly larger than default but not as large as the hovered item. So, in this case, we'll set the scale to neighbor item scale and, again, the margin to expanded margin. Once we've determined the correct scale and margin for the current dock item, we update its styling. We use the transform property to apply the scale effect and adjust its margin to give it the desired spacing. Now that we've established our update logic, we need to define what happens when a user hovers over an individual dock item. Let's tackle this with event listeners. We're going to loop through each item in dock items and attach a mouse center event where we have another loop going through each item again, but this time, we're updating their states based on our hover action. For each of these other items, we'll determine if it's the one being hovered over. If the other item is the same as the current item from the outer loop, we know it's the one being hovered on. We set its is hovered property to true. Now, for the magic of figuring out neighbors, we want to see if the other item is directly next to our hovered item. To do this, we'll look at their positions in the dock items array. If the difference in their indices is exactly one, we know they're neighbors. So, we set the is neighbor property of that other item to true. You might notice the use of math.abs here. That's to ensure we're capturing both the item before and the item after our hovered one, as both are its neighbors. Once we've updated the states of all dock items in relation to our hovered item, we call our previously defined update dock items function. This function will now adjust the styles of all items based on their new states. To address scenario when our mouse cursor leaves the entire dock, we're adding an event listener to the dock container for the mouse leave event. Inside this listener, we loop through each item in our dock items. For every item, we want to reset its state. So, we set both the is hovered and is neighbor properties to false. This ensures that none of the icons are enlarged or spaced out. After resetting the states of all the icons, we call our trusty update dock items function once again. This will adjust the styles of the dock items back to their default sizes and spacings. And that's it for the JavaScript part. With these functionalities, our dock animation becomes lively and interactive, closely resembling the macOS dock effect. Alright folks, that wraps up our deep dive into creating the macOS dock animation. If this tutorial brought a splash of code magic into your day, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing for more tech artistry. To access the source code, dive into the link in the description. With the Pro Membership, you're not just boosting the channel but also unlocking exclusive access to source codes and a treasure trove of monthly website templates. Thanks for tuning in.